Okay, guys, looks like it's time. Uh, first of all, I have some information. Ah, thank you. First of all, I'll be going over some basic stuff about wormholes. Uh, I'll be covering that for about 30 minutes, maybe more, depending on how it w goes. And after that, I'll be holding an sort of open Q&A session where you'll be welcome to ask me anything you want to know about wormhole space. Uh, myself, my name is Dr. Grappley. I'm a member of Lead Farmers. We live in the class 5 wormhole and we are mainly PvP focused, but I guess all the class 5 wormholes will tell you that, but we are we do most of our PvE to pay for our PvP and we try to find fights wherever we can find them. We fight in wormhole space, we fight in low sec, we fight in null sec, wherever we can get a connection. Uh, I have a little document that will help you out. Let's see if I can get a link for you. It's posted in lecture.euni. Uh, I started out in wormhole space myself about six, seven months ago. Uh, before that, I was a member of EUni and did the normal missioning, running, had no clue about PvP whatsoever. But after a while, I started my own wormhole corp with a couple of friends. Uh, got into a C1 wormhole, uh, did some sites, uh, got blown up, and I thought, looks like these guys are having fun. So I applied to lead farmers, because none of my friends were really that experienced or able in PvP at all. So I got sort of tired about being bullied around, so I joined the big boys instead. Uh, okay, let's see here. First of all, first of all, I'm going to talk a bit about classes of wormholes. Uh, uh, wormholes are basically uh, divided between different classes, and there are C1 to C6 wormholes. Excuse me? And right, feel free to interrupt me whenever. Uh, I sort of want this uh, as an open lecture, so uh, if you have questions, just give me a short shout, and I will tell you when you can ask it. Uh, C1s to C3s are basically solvable. Uh, you can do them in uh, most... The most common shape you'll see is Drake's, I guess. Uh, they are still quite good in C1 to C3, even though the missile nerf that I will run will tell you about, but they are still workable. The C1s you can do in basically any battlecruiser. Uh, you require an Omni tank, that and sleepers will do. Sleepers are the rats in Wormhole Space, and those will do uh, all kinds of damage. Basically, uh, you can do C ones in even in the salt frigates. Uh, C twos are doable in most of the new attack battle cruisers. C threes you can do in uh, basically well tanked drakes if you have good skills. Uh, T three cruisers most common ship there is a Tengu. Uh, you can do them in uh, legions are doable. Proteus is doable, but uh, they are not the best solo ship. When it comes to PvE, they are very capable PvP ships, though. Uh, when it comes up to the high class wormhole, C4, C5, and C6s, you'll be starting up with running sites and fleets more. Uh, C4s 
are often done in remote rep ships, Tengus most of there as well. C5s and C6s, we have something called capital escalations. That means that when we run, run sites in our home, that is a C5, uh, whenever you warp a cap on field, the capital, uh, you will get an escalation wave for a bunch of battleships. And you can get up to four of these waves, and that requires uh, two carriers and two dreadnoughts. If you warp three carriers on field, you will not get the third escalation wave. Only way to get all four is, wave, is to warp in two carriers and two dreadnoughts. Okay. I'm going to talk a bit about what makes Warren Space different to other space. Uh, basically, I guess you know this. Uh, if you don't, just let me know, by the way. X up in Lecture.ie Uni if you've never been in Wormhole at all. Oh, nice. The thing about Wormhole Space, it, partly you have no local at all, so you won't see if anyone is with you in system. Uh, if you type in local though, you will show up. So, uh, most people don't type in local, but uh, we tend to from time to time, depending on if we want to get a fight out of people or if we want to just say a good fight after a fight or to talk to our friends make ourselves known that, that we're there <laughs> uh, yeah. you cannot get capitals into the smaller class wormholes because of mass restrictions you can only jump a certain mass of a ship through certain wormholes see once you cannot get battleships into see uh, one to C4, you cannot get any capitals into at all. And C5 and C6s, you cannot get supers and titans in there. When it comes to C5 and C6s, the most amount of capitals you can get through a wormhole is free. Either free dreadnoughts, or free carriers, or two dreadnoughts and one carrier, or get my drift. And you can only get a certain mass on the wormhole, uh, a certain mass of ships jump through the wormhole before it collapses on you. So that means you have always have limited fleet sizes in engagements and some site running. Uh, when you get uh, some, like our static connection as we call it, uh, we have 3 billion uh, kilos of mass. And three billion tons of mass, rather. And after that mass has jumped through, the wormhole will collapse. After half the mass has gone through, you'll get a... If you check info on it, it will say that it's destabilized because of ship's mass running through it, something like that. And after 90% has gone through it, you will have a message that is critical and soon thereafter it will close and after this will close uh, if it's a static wormhole it will despawn and it will spawn anywhere else in the system you're in like our C5 that we live in have a C5 static and that static will spawn anywhere else in system and this new static that we get can lead into any of the other C5 wormholes. So that means our neighbors are constantly changing and we can connect to basically anywhere. Uh, we can, uh, when we start scanning down the chain, we usually find null sex, low sex, high sex sometimes. Uh, we can even get other connections in our home systems to sometimes we have high sec and sometimes we have incoming C5s 
or quite often we have incoming C5s because of there are many C5 to C5. And the good thing about this is whenever you really don't like your connection, when it's nothing doing the connection or there are any reason at all that you don't want there, you can just roll it. That means uh, if we put, uh, usually we use an orca and a dreadnought. We put the orca through and then we poke, uh, brought the we bring the dreadnought through and then we just bring them back and the wormhole will close and a new one will open. And this is the way we look for fights quite often. We'll look for, we will roll the sights, scan the new one down, jump the scout through, uh, check it out, see if we can find anything to fight or a sight running fleet that we can gank, something fun like that. And if we don't like it, we just roll, check the next one out. And we'll keep going to that like that until we find some nice juicy capital scale. Now I'll be doing a longer Q and A section, so if you just save the, all the questions till later, I will have basically all open comms. Uh, there are also some effects in different kind of wormholes. Uh, there are, for instance, if you have a black hole, you will have your ship will go a lot faster and will also have a lot less agility. So it's going to be slower to line, slower to accelerate, but fast top speed. And s there are other uh, systems that will give you shield buffs, armor buffs different kind of buffs to your weapons if you have uh, some will give you uh, a higher turret damage uh, some will give you higher missile damage, some will nerf it uh, there are also no effect wormholes that will do nothing at all so it's quite important before an engagement to check out which kind of system you're on to see which kind of fleet composition you, mean, you need And I'm going to talk about some different roles in wormhole space as well. Uh, what you can do to get into wormhole space is basically when you start out looking through a wormhole, uh, you probably need a, a scanning ship. Basically, you can always start out there. Uh, you need some decent scanning skills. I would suggest that you get your astrometrics to 4 and all your support scales to 3 at least. Uh, my scanner, my ult that I use as a scanner has perfect scanning skills and a virtue set that costs like 2.5 billion. And it's really nice to have a dedicated scanner if you live in wormal space. And this picket, you can use a Cavops, you can use, uh, when you start out, you can use it like the Tech 1 Exploration Frigate. Or you can use the Cloak if T freeze if you want to go the tackle road. You can also hear a tackle on the Cavop ships, basically, or stealth bombers. Uh, DPS we use in wormhole space are uh, some cruisers. Uh, we mostly use our T3 fleets. We have lots of legions for DPS. We use uh, Proteus for DPS. Those are the legions of Proteus are the main DPS ships, basically. We use uh, locusts and we also use uh, armor Tengus for ECM. And what you'll notice is, uh, I'll talk a lot about armor, because in high-class wormholes, uh, armor is where it's at, basically. We use guardians for logistics, uh, we use archons for capitals, uh, or for carriers, and we will use more as a dreadnought, because, uh, a Moros at Dreadnought 1 is basically 
the same damage per ejection as you get from an Archon at Dreadnought 5. Or in <laughs> Revelation at Dreadnought 5, sorry. And Revelation is the Amar version of the Dreadnought. Feel free to, if anyone could link the ships I'm talking about, would be very nice. Uh, what you need other than the normal DPS logistics rules are, of course, salvaging. Uh, when you do sites, you need ships to salvage. Uh, you need salvaging five to salvage the wrecks in uh, wormhole space. Uh, what you can do, though, is have salvaging free and use two rigs, two salvaging rigs, and that will equal the, the salvaging five skill. And what will we always use the Noctis uh, when you start out in like lower class wormholes, you can always use the destroyer. I think most of you that ever run, ran missions have done salvaging, so same deal there, uh, only the wrecks are a bit hard to salvage. I'll get some nice selection of ships there. That is all of those are uh, common sites in our wormhole, basically. Uh, we use uh, code breakers, uh, analyzers for the radars and the uh, Metrometric sites. And for later sites, uh, we tend to use ventures. To gas off, gas offing is probably the most boring thing you can do next to mine, but uh, we tend to build our own T3 hulls, T3 subsystems, and when you do that, you need a lot of gas. And you also get quite decent money out of it for some of the sites at least. <laughs> yeah, right, well, the <laughs> Yeah, Venture, exactly. That is the best ship you can use for gas mining. And takes you about two weeks to scale into it. And you can do the high-level gas sites in that. You can even ninja them. You can ask about if you're interested in that afterwards, so you can do them basically without clearing the rats in sight. Each ship fast, it also has the highest, highest output of any ship at Gas Mining Frigate 5. You have the highest output of any ship you can get from Gas Mining. It's different kind of sites to make ISK or a different way to make ISK in Wormhole Space. If you continue to, I think I'm on page 5 of the document. No. Uh, you have combat site, the anomalies, and those will consist of just red crosses in, in space, which you shoot uh, when you in higher wormhole, in high class wormholes, when you warp another capital on the field and more red crosses will appear and when you shoot a certain red cross even more red cross will appear and when you shot them all you go salvage uh, and you loot them and you will get all that loot and all that salvage bring it back to your pass go do all the sites you do, you do and collect for about a week and bring it all out to K-Space and sell it You also have the signatures, same as you have in high sec, low sec, every space basically, but the difference in wormhole space is uh, you get different kinds of loot from the, uh, the sites, except for the gravimetric sites and the laters, you get gas from those, a uh, different kind of gas in wormhole space, the gas you find in wormhole space you cannot find in k-space. And when it comes to mining in uh, wormhole space, uh, we basically don't do it because 
Uh, we have like one guy in corp that builds capitals that does it sometimes when he needs uh, certain kinds of ore, uh, but it's basically ship profit. Uh, and it's at very high risk, so it's not worth doing, and it's also mining, so I think it's quite boring, but it's their own. Uh, we try to make money through PvP. Uh, it's kind of hard to make money through PvP, but we do that by looting ships we people we kill. Uh, we have been known to do some invasions of wormhole system. Uh, that means going in there, shooting their towers for a whole weekend. And when we done shooting their towers, we try to loot as much we can and see if they have anything decent worth good money. Basically, we really don't like shooting towers because it takes a lot of time. It requires wormhole control almost 24-7 uh, while we do it. And uh, also we really don't like getting people out of wormhole space. We like to have our wormholes quite filled because we like to find people to shoot. And when you do a lot of invasions, uh, they tend to run away. We do also do some infiltrating darker sites of EVE, basically. We have some members that do it, at least. And that means that they tr have characters they try to join a corp with, and basically when they get access to that corp, they rob them blind. On page 7, I posted a bunch of useful links for you. Uh, those are basically the, the links I use in when I go scouting, uh, checking out new systems. You also have a couple links to the EU Niviki uh, with some help of helpful information there. Wormnav.com is the first site I open whenever I jump in new wormhole it can check out which kind of wormhole it has, which class it is, which kind of static it has uh, which kind of effects are there basically all the basic information you can get from there wormhole.es is a bit of the, kind of the same uh, it only gives you a bit more info though which is which corporation they think live there. It's not always as accurate as it should be, but it's kind of good base information. Those are basically the things I want to go through as a start. Now I will be holding a open Q&A. Uh, basically what I want now is I want for you to speak up if you have any questions. If you really don't want to speak up, uh, just type them in lecture.euni. Uh, could I have one guy that reads me the questions out of lecture.euni? Could I have a volunteer, please? And, of course, listen to Voldemar. You have an excellent uh, little starter to get into wormholes in the Uni Wormhole Campus. That's an awesome way to get in there. Okay, if you start typing any kinds of questions you have, or if you want to speak up, throw an X in there, um, I'll give you the word. Logistic ships is very much loved. Uh, we love our guardians. Uh, we use them every day, all day, basically. 
that Guardians are is most of what we use uh, in uh, engagements outside of wormholes. Our own wormhole. Sometimes we bring in Archon and use as capital raptor. Hey, all. As Alexandra says, T1 logis are also very useful in low class wormholes. It's a good way to start getting into logistics. And T1 logistics are also a lot of fun. We tend to do some T1 fleets in Lozak. They are really much fun. Uh, other wormholes are basically the fun thing about wormholes is. Uh, we don't have much blues in Wormel. Uh, we have uh, a uni, basically. And we have our bros, Future Corp. Uh, Life Farms in Future Corps has been bros for forever. We basically both base out of uni. Uh, tricky. We love to fight them whenever we find them. Uh, if, if we... Uh, if they are invaded, though, we might even fight on their side. The good thing about Wormel Corps is uh, if someone is threatened uh, that we kind of like, we can hop on their side, help them out, and next day we shoot each other. So the general tension of Wormel spaces, we are quite friendly to one another. It's not the uh, Bit major drama pack that an old sec tends to be sometimes. Uh, you can sure uh, about the solo in the C1. Uh, go in, check it out. Uh, start looking around. Don't expect to come out alive though, but uh, as said, uh, Please go ahead. Uh, when you start out, it's always good to bring a, get a group together, uh, get some f couple of friends that can do picketing for you. Set one one person on the wormhole on each wormhole connection you have. Uh, if you want to run sites, basically, uh, take a couple of guys, go run the sites, salvage, and move on. C1-2, C C2 radar sites, those are easily dual with a couple of BCs, yeah. And they are profitable. I would, uh, for, in your terms of, is they are really profitable. For me, not so much, but you can easily do 50 million an hour, maybe. Uh, about Greedfu, we don't use it that much because we tend to mostly like our our T3 gangs and we like to get up close and personal and mostly fight uh, on the wormhole at shorter distance. That's mostly because of the fleet compositions we use. They are not very useful when you get out of get out longer range than 30-40 kilometers and even when we have tend to use a lot of Proteus as well so, and those are not very useful when you come outside of 10-15 kilometers so basically we don't use too much uh, of the grid food mostly when we when fight in wormhole space you all most when we fight in wormhole space we use that we use other fleet compositions for low sec, null sec, but we tend to, use, to like our legions, our Lokis, our, and our Proteus, and our Guardians. And the good thing about uh, doing higher level sites is you easily afford to lose uh, lose those ships once in a while. Uh, my normal now I haven't lost the legion in probably two months. But even if if I would lose one, even two legions every month wouldn't be a bigger problem to make those money back. And my legions tend to cost almost two billion.
So, did I miss any questions? Feel free to speak up as well. Name your wormholes, navigate any chain. Absolutely. Uh, we usually, t a lot of different corps use different conventions on their, uh, on their naming, uh, basically. Uh, while you scan the, scan the chain, uh, you have, we usually talk about them as first out, second out, third out, depending on how many jumps you're out and you like the third out static. We also use a mapper tool that we have. Uh, Ourself, we use a Google document for mapping. And one of our guys that are, are good at those kind of stuff and doing uh, uh, web applications have done an application for us that basically will map the map the system and you can just check the map out and you see I want to jump to that system and you see the connection to it and you just jump that way it's uh, kind of hard to use but we usually name just like second out null sec second out c3 second out c4 second out low sec whatever we and we have a connection line in the Pad that will give you uh, basically at that. This one is yellow and leads into that wormhole that I was also. Soloing Lolo wormholes is absolutely possible. Yeah. It is. Uh, Drake is always a good start. Uh, C1, so you can use any form of Battlecruiser basically. Except for the T3, they are a bit squishy. Well, probably Talos could be useful, but I would. Oh yes, exactly. Well, you listen to Corbin as well. Make sure you know how to use D-Scan. Uh, whatever you're in sight, just spam that D-Scan. Uh, make sure you're aligned. And as soon as you see something, jump up. Just get the hell out of there. Good thing to have is uh, have one guy on the wormhole with a probe out, basically cloaked. So it's always good to have another character with you at least. Uh, the guy with the probe out will spam the probe, rescan the system every 10 seconds or whatever your scanning skills let you. So you will see if there is popped up in new wormholes, anything like that. And always check the scan while in wormhole space. Just see if there's any new ships on grid or warping in on grid with you. Uh, check if there's uh, probes in space, combat probes looking for you, normal probes looking for the site you're on. Always keep a watch, watch out. That is basically what you need. Uh, there are exactly if you're an anomaly they don't need probes to find you uh, anomalies you find, find by just going to the scan window and just press scan without dropping probes you will find all the anomalies that is within uh, 60 AU from you I think it is Or 64 even. 64, yeah. Uh, if it's a really big system, you'll need to warp around to find all the anomalies, but never, or drop a, drop a deep space scanner probe. You will see all the anomalies in the system if you drop one of those. If you want me to go into one of those subjects I've already been into a bit closer, just hollow. It 
it's okay if I ask on my Absolutely. Mind. Please um, do. I'm just curious, how do you guys handle loot distribution from PvE? Uh, we basically have a apl web application that we, whenever we join a PvP op, uh, we add ourselves to the operation. Uh, we do the sites we want. If another pe person run, we just add a new batch to that operation. And basically when we're done, we add all the loot and it will be divided between the, the, all the guys in there. We have a payout every second week. Is it like a custom application that somebody from your corp wrote? Or yes, is it, it is. All right. Uh, there are some public stuff out there as well. Uh, ours is not public. Uh, I think Future Corps or Worm Bros has some mapper with some built-in uh, stuff for dividing loot as well. Uh, and there are a couple of applications out there. Uh, you can do it just by keeping your and having a notepad will help you a lot, basically. But our system is basically we have you get paid a fixed amount for the blue loot, the gas, everything, and you just add all uh, all the blue loot you get afterwards, and automatically is distributed off their payout. So you're not uh, basically the corp is not buying it, but uh, you just yeah the corp is buying it from us, but oh, okay. uh, it, it handles all the logistics, everything like that. So we just drop the loot off basically, and we have guys in corp that ha will handle all the logistics whenever we get a case based connection. Oh, that's handy. Yeah, it does. And we also use uh, build a lot of tier freeze and uh, tech free cruisers and stuff like that. So a lot of the loot will go into that production line. And all the blue loot will uh, have to be transported into the case base. Absolutely. Gas, uh, like gas, uh, hulls, uh, subsystems, stuff like that we use ourselves in production. Do we have any guys from the Wormel camp here, by the way? Oh, we have a bunch. Nice. Uh, which kind of Wormel was it that you guys lived in? I, I was in there when you guys were oh, solid. C2, yeah. Yes, yeah, the C2. All right. It's a C2 with a high sec static and a C3 static. Ah, Roger. We uh, farm the C3. You farm the C3, so you, you mostly have used battle cruisers, or what, what do you use? Yeah, mostly battle cruisers, uh, T1 Logi, or Guardians. Ah, Roger. Mostly armor fleets. Yeah, if you guys ever want an excursion, just let me know, and I'll see if I can whip something up. Maybe come do some C5 sites if you want to. And absolutely join that camp. Uh, it, was it NoHo that... Uh, no, it was uh, Transmission Loss that tried to get into your system, right? Mm, I think so, yeah. Yeah, a while ago. But we bad phoned... Uh, <laughs> yeah, we were, I was uh, on your comms trying to order things up, I remember. So <laughs> but uh, I, I was so sad that nothing happened then. But, oh well. <laughs> and after that transmission lost has failed scale, did horribly, so they basically don't exist anymore. They do, but they are, have far fewer in numbers. It tends to happen quite a lot. Uh, Exhale broke up a couple of days ago, basically. Transmission loss broke up. Uh, so that's two of the bigger corps 
we and our, ourselves are not that big. We are about 200 in, in lines, and that is including alts and all, but these guys are um, between, I think Excel was like 600, and I think they're down to 400 now. And transmission lost was like 8, 900, and they are divided into two groups at the moment. Uh, armor fleets over shield fleets in wormholes, that's uh, basically mostly because of the uh, engagement ranges, uh, because you all mostly fight on the wormhole, uh, so you're basically not often further out than 20 kilometers, and armor tends to be most effective up close, or some, mostly the brawling brawling fleets that makes it that armor armor is more effective uh, and also the capitals we use are mostly Archon and Morris re revelations and some go and they are very 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 much better than the sh their shield counterparts in Wormel Space Uh, yeah, Loki web range is very nice to have. Uh, uh, the hard thing about shields is if you look at the Tengu, uh, you get quite low DPS out of it, and you have to kite with it basically. So it's kind of hard to use in the engagement in normal space. So you have to pull range all the time. When you land in a bubble, you will not have a, or jump through a wormhole, you will not have the option to pull a range, because you have uh, Loki's that will hold you in place and you... Yeah, ECM goose, we use those quite a lot. Or not quite a lot, we usually have like one or two of them on grid. But it says mostly because of uh, engagement ranges, uh, but also armor is fun to fly, according to me. Shields are fun as well, but there are not as many options in shields. Oh, nice kill there. This guy came into our wormhole three times. Huh. We killed him three times. <laughs> Wait, what? He was trying to farm our C2? No, oh, he's just trying to get some PvP. I was definitely not very good at it. That's a decent fit, bud. Too much money, if you ask me. Yeah, and who the hell uses Kaldari Navy heavy missile launchers? That's not m that much money, but uh, using those missile launchers is just plain stupid. Because the Tech 2 versions are better. Probably too lazy to actually train for tech tools. Oh yeah, probably. He's quite old though, he's 2009 characters, so he should be able to use them. <laughs> mm, yeah, indeed. Could you comment on Waldemar's question a bit further up? Uh, Waldemar, let's see here. The problems with living in wormhole spaces are mostly logistics. Uh, some uh, and if you have a bad connection with not a lot of people on, you tend to it tends to get a bit stale. Uh, it's harder. A lot of corps try to live in high class wormholes before they're ready to do it, and that will that will tend to make them break up basically. And what uh, makes uh, alliances break up that is mostly mostly different minds, different strong minds, basically. Like we had transmission last year, uh, we had a couple of uh, s s very strong minds in that that uh, alliance, and 
half the alliance lived in C2s and half the alliance lived in the C6 wormholes, basically. And the C2 guys wanted to leave and keep the transmission loss name, and the C6 guys didn't want them to have the transmission loss name, so they voted them off the, the leadership in the transmission, basically, and kicked them out. But, I mean, the, mostly that thing that people tends to leave, because I, if we have someone in our corp that has been in for longer than one month, they never leave, basically, unless they leave the game. <laughs> but it's very seldom we have people leaving. Uh, if you get stuck in the waste of the wormhole and the, the PvP forms in wormhole space, it's hard to go anywhere else, basically. I feel that is because I get I can do whatever I, whatever I want any day I can go to low sec just look look up the low sec connection go out there pvping I can go into other wormholes I can go into null sec uh, we as a corp is uh, even a part of uh, HBC I don't tend to go into null sec a lot but if we want to we can uh, go and join test fleets in null sec And you really need to get into a world camp. Yes. Command ships are very useful. Uh, we use them as much as possible. Uh, if we have them around, we always use them. Uh, if we don't, uh, we don't use them, but they are extremely useful. It's always good to have buffs, and those buffs are very, very nice. Uh, the, since the recent patch now, uh, the command chips are a bit better than tier free, uh, tech free. Like uh, local links or legion links, but so mostly we use the. Let's see here. Yeah, Damnation is, I guess, in most, most use ships. And as I said, you get 200k EHP, you can get a very, very nice tank on that one. Okay, I'm soon gonna wrap this up. Uh, I have, we have an op living in, in, not so long. Do, do we have any last questions, or did I miss any questions, or you guys want to add anything? What does lead farmers have that feature core doesn't have? Uh, we are bros to the end, so we're basically quite similar corps, actually. Uh, I think we tend to... Uh, we quite often have joint ops as well, and we fight alongside it. Future Corps is the only corp in Wormhole Space that we don't shoot, basically. <laughs> so we are two different kinds of kind of the same flavor, basically. So I love them to death. I always will fight alongside them. So I will never speak bad about Future Corps. <laughs> but basically, I mean, what you can do uh, is always you can come and join us for uh, for the LFO. Uh, we have a starter corps, a starter corp that is called LFO, or uh, Lead Farmers Origin, and. You can join us for one month and fly with us, and you can basically go to fly with Fusion Corps for a month and see what you like. Join whichever you like. That's what I would recommend. And even if you fly with them, you will meet up quite often with us. We usually tend to do like 
weekends when we do rolling together and when we find something used to kill we often bet and phone each other. Size five with that answer. Basically, both Lead Farmers and Fusion Corps are known for our Leroying. <laughs> we tend to not back away from fights anywhere. Even in, we kind of like to fight outnumbered and we like to fight when the odds are almost against us. That's uh, the major difference in both our corps, I guess. From other huge power blocks, because we tend to, uh, a lot of the other bigger C5 corps tend to not fight when they don't have huge numbers. Well, we love to fight when we have small numbers. Hmm, can't see that. It's copyright reasons. Can show you our YouTube channel, and you'll have a lot of typical engagements in there. There is a very nice engagement we have. I actually think I saw that video earlier, by the way, in some other forum. But our typical uh, fleet size is engagement about 10 to 20, basically. And we usually move. It's not often you find bigger fleets than 30 in wormhole space. Uh, I mean, sometimes you do. Uh, we had a couple of months ago. We had when they some people tried to invade Hard Knox. Uh, they bat phoned the other C5 corps, uh, and we basically had a. I think we had around 150 in fleet. Then we faced about that as well. We had about. 20 capitals on field, maybe? But typically it's mostly around 10 to 20 people. And that's the nice thing about uh, worm engagements. I love the small gang PvP because it's uh, it lets you be a deciding factor in the engagement, basically. Uh, kill is not just our farm. We have uh, XU in our lines as well. Uh, I'll link those if just as XU has a bit lower requirements for joining them. Uh, they now live in a C5 with the C3 static. So we do not live in the same system, but we tend to fight it each other's sides quite often. Yes, it is where, where Harnath lives now. That is true. They have also have a couple other guys that are, have been... Uh, Corbin, you probably know Uncle Donald, maybe? He's also in there. I think I remember you, Corbin. Yeah, Uncle Donald definitely rings the bell. Yeah. Yeah, he's in there as well.
You've been in the union for quite a while, right? Thank hmm? you. Ah, oh, you've been in the union for quite a while. I remember being in some engagements with you from my uni days. Yeah, way too long. I still don't know where to go. <laughs> <laughs> That's always hard. Okay, guys, I'm going to have to start moving and see if I can join our little PvP up here. Uh, but thanks a lot for today, and hopefully I've been on some of some use for you. If you need anything, need to ask anything, just feel free to message me. Yeah, nice class. Cheers, mate. Thank you, guys. And see you around.